Good morning. Today is Friday the 4th of October and um, I thought I'd do this video for um, people who aren't in the uh, Lucy Letby groups that I've joined on social media who may not know um, some of this sort of, I don't know if it's new information, but it's kind of um, information that's been really emphasised this week at the Thirlwall inquiry. But before I go into that, um, I just want to make a comment about some of the quite vicious um, responses I've had from certain people um, to my videos. There are a lot of people who are just not prepared to open their minds and consider the possibility that she might be innocent. I'm prepared to consider the possibility that she might be guilty because I don't know what really happened. I know that um, Dr Evans conclusions are nonsense that's for certain looking at what i've seen so far so his whole testimony could be struck off the um records and then what if you what are you left with you're left with statistics which can be struck off the records so then what are you left with you're left with bitter colleagues such as brary and jaram who are f throwing slurs at a nurse and were accused of bullying her and got disciplined for it and she won that case. So what are you left with really when you get rid of these bad actors? You know, what are you left with? So that's why I say what I say and if you disagree with it, you don't have to watch my videos. Please go somewhere else. Go and watch something that you agree with. If you're so vicious in your hatred of Lucy Letby or you're vicious in your hatred of me because I'm defending her or because I'm black and you don't want to hear it from a black person or whatever your motivation is, you know, just go somewhere else because I will get rid of you from my YouTube channel if you continue to at, at, um, insult people who comment on my posts. I'm not going to put up with you abusing people because they have a different opinion to you. You're entitled to your opinion. Just take it elsewhere. But anyway, enough of that. So, in the um, Telegraph yesterday, there was an article and it's, it's titled Lucy Letby Inquiry, Rise in Baby Deaths Was Inevitable in Unit, Hospital Bosses Warned. So the bosses predicted that this was going to happen because, well... As an example, on some date, let me see, some date in 2015, when, you know, as these deaths were occurring, at 11.03am, 11 the doctors suspected bug responsible for deaths. So there was a spike in the deaths, and at 11.03am, they thought it was because of a bug. By 11.10, they said, there was an air of disbelief that Letby could be harming babies. By 1.14pm, unexplained baby deaths occurred just a few times in a doctor's career. By 3.03pm, it was doctor will carry guilt for rest of life for not preventing baby deaths. So why, how could the doctors have prevented the baby deaths? The only way in my mind that the doctors could have prevented the baby's deaths is if they were either trained better or having had the best training they actually did their jobs properly maybe some of them were hung over and they weren't putting in the tubes properly maybe they were overworked overstretched and so they were tired and they were getting making mistakes but they were blaming themselves right so by 3 45 p.m on the same day they decided spikes in deaths inevitable because of the busyness in the unit Managers told consultants. So the managers told the consultants that, you know, it's understandable that there's going to be deaths because we're so busy. There's nothing else to see here. It's just that we're too busy. And we probably need to do something about it. Maybe employ more staff or something. Get some more money from the government who has been cutting back on um, budgets within the NHS. Maybe this is what we need to do. But nope, this is not what they did. So let me read the whole article anyway. It says, A spike in deaths at Lucy Letby's hospital was inevitable because of the acute, acuity and busyness of the unit managers believed. The Thurwell inquiry heard how executives at the Countess of Chester 
held a meeting with doctors in the summer of 2016 and showed a graph which linked the rise in mortality to patient numbers. So also patient numbers increased, it seems. And that also, I mean, obviously the more patients you have, the more chance that people are going to die. It's as simple as that. It's just a, it's a simple maths equation based on statistics and probability. Anyway, I'll continue. Dr. Susie Holt, who joined the hospital as a consultant in April 2016, told the hearing how she was called to a meeting to discuss the increased deaths. We were being told of the rise of acuity and busyness in the unit that perhaps an increased number of deaths was inevitable, she said. I'm not sure what role statistics have to play in this situation. The death of each and every baby needed to be scrutinised to understand whether they were sudden or whether they were unexpected. I think the individual patients were what was important and the matters around what happened to each of them rather than arbitrary statistics like the number of days between deaths. The third world inquiry is investigating how the deaths and collapses at the counties of Chester were allowed to continue for so long. Consultants had complained to managers about the spike in mortality in 2015 and had warned that Letby was present at all the incidents. So here's the thing. Whether these babies died because of malpractice by consultants, whether they died because of their deteriorating health conditions by the time they arrived in the neonatal ward, so they died of natural causes, or whether they died via murder by a member of staff in the hospital, the management within the hospital are now being held to account because they should have taken action like downgrading the ward earlier, or if they suspected it was Lucy Letby or some other member of staff, they should have identified that by taking it seriously and doing something about it. So they tried to throw Lucy Letby under the bus thinking that this would absolve them of responsibility for what's happened. But all that's happened is it's, by having this trial that went on for years, so this happened, these deaths happened in 2015, it's now nine years later. And all it's done is it delayed them being held to account. And that's probably what they wanted, so that some of them could retire and have their pensions and, and get on with their lives and go on a holiday and do stuff with their family. It gave them an extra nine years breathing space. Or maybe not nine years, because by the time they went to the police, 2017, I think maybe 2016 or 2017, so maybe seven years. Maybe give them seven years breathing space and this is why they did it, in my opinion. But they probably thought that it wasn't just breathing space that it would get them. They probably thought that by throwing her under the bus, nobody would ever look at it again. It was just murders, nothing to do with us, nothing to see here. But anyway, I'll continue. Dr Elizabeth Newby, a consultant paediatrician who worked at the neonatal unit in 2015, told the hearing that initially there had been an air of disbelief that Letby was harming babies. No one had ever seen anything happen. She, so here, I, this sentence just, no one had ever seen anything happen. No one had ever seen anything happen. No one had seen anything happen. She told the inquiry. It was just a feeling that, a feeling, a feeling that she was always there at the time there didn't appear to be any evidence. So there was a feeling based on the fact that statistic, or not even statistic, that coincidentally she happened to be there. So because she just happened to be there, there was a feeling. It's like if I went to the end of my road and the shop across the road got robbed and I happen to be there, people look around, oh, there's a black man. I have a feeling he did something. Because this actually happened to a member of my family. This is exactly what happened to a member of my family, that they got arrested because people had a feeling because there was a bank robbery and he happened to be on the same road and he ended up on remand for over a year. For a, I can't remember, it could have been 18 months. This was back in the day when you could go and remand for 18 months before a trial. And as soon as the case got into the court, the judge threw it out. Within five minutes, it got thrown out. But he had 18 months, ruined his life, 
lost his business, lost his house. Do you think this is, this is what happens when people have a feeling? So, where was I? There was an air of disbelief about it. The only thing that we could say at the time was that she happened to be on all the sh all of the shifts. No one had ever seen anything, heard anything. There were lots of counter arguments that she was a very competent nurse. Everyone observed good practice. So I'm going to go over this bit again. No one had ever seen anything. So this at this point, no one had ever seen anything except... Dr. Jeram, a few years later, claimed that he had actually seen something, but he just hadn't mentioned it at that time or at an inquest or at a disciplinary meeting. But anyway, we were a very, very small unit with a very small pool of nursing staff. So it was not inconceivable that the same poor person might have been on duty for a number of events. Exactly. Especially if she's doing overtime to pay her mortgage. The inquiry heard how the doctors initially believed that a medical or environmental reason might be responsible for the increased death rate. Dr. Holt said that the superbug and medication side, of, side effects had all been considered in a mortality review in April 2016. Dr. Rachel Langdale, KC, counsel for the inquiry, asked if the medical causes had been investigated and eliminated. Dr. Holt said it was difficult to eliminate them, but they had been investigated and some guidance and treatment plans had been changed following the mortality review. Consultant Dr. Murthy Saladi said he was initially concerned that the baby deaths and collapses were due to an outbreak of the lethal bacteria Pseudonymus in the unit. So, anyway, I'm not even going to... This is crazy. For all the taps in the unit, we had filters and they were growing Pseudomonas sorry, from the taps. He said, although he said the team was never able to find evidence of an infection in the babies. Well, that's because we know now that when the babies die, usually they die of sepsis. And there's usually no, um, there's no signs of it when you do a medical examination after death. There's no evidence of it. But there is an air embolism. Would you believe Dr. Saladi said that by January 2017, the relationship between the consultants and the managers at the Countess of Chester had broken down. He described a meeting in the month in which Tony Chambers, the chief executive, had banged the table and told the consultants that the hospital was drawing a line under the allegations. I do remember the red face of Tony Chambers, his forceful voice, and him banging on the table, Dr. Saladi said in a statement to the inquiry. Dr. Saladi said... He would carry the guilt of not being able to prevent the baby deaths at the Countess of Wessex, Countess of Chester, sorry, for the rest of his life. In a closing statement, he told the parents that he was profoundly sorry. It was a guilty feeling I carry and I think I will carry for the rest of my life. I'm profoundly sorry for that. And then what it has here is a breakdown of, um, oh no, this is just the latest updates. So where was he? It says devastated to apologise to it. This is interesting. 4:20 p.m. I don't know if this timeline is actually at the inquiry, but it says doctor devastated to apologise to Letby after she won grievance. Doctor Holt told the inquiry she was devastated to be asked to write a letter of apology to Lucy Letby after the nurse won a grievance in January 2017. She said, "I don't feel it was appropriate. I don't feel I had a choice, and I am quite embarrassed that we." ever wrote that letter and sent it. I don't know how it makes the families feel to see that and have that, have read that. I think it's awful. Dr. Holt said that many of the nurses continue to support Dr. Letby despite the allegations, no, support Letby, sorry, despite the allegations. And she was invited to a Christmas party in December 2016, even though she was still banned from the unit. She said there was so much swirling. We now know that she was has been tested in a court of law and found guilty, but at the time we were still dealing with uncertainty. Can this possibly be true? It was a pretty astonishing time. We all felt that working with our board was going to be better than ending up on a gar on gardening leave, which felt like was the insinuation from the January meeting, that if we didn't toe the line, we wouldn't 
be remaining in our jobs. It is important to remember that at this point, there is already talk of her returning to the neonatal unit. So there was a degree of thinking, actually, we need to keep our voice and not be silenced. So let's look at this one, 3.45pm, spike in deaths, inevitable because of busyness in the unit, managers told consultant. A spike in deaths at the Countess of Chester was inevitable because of the acuity and busyness in the unit, managers told consultants. The inquiry heard how management held a meeting in July 2016 and showed a graph linking the rise in mortality to patient numbers. Dr Holt said, I remember the message we were being given, which I couldn't corroborate. We were being told the rise of accuracy and busyness on the unit that perhaps an increased number of deaths was inevitable. I'm not sure what role statistics have to play in the situation. The deaths of each and every baby needs to be scrutinised to understand whether they were sudden, whether they were unexpected. I think the individual patients were what was important and the matters around what happened to each of them rather than the arbitrary statistics like number of days between deaths. Later in the inquiry, she added, it's really important that we did consider all factors. So it, so it wasn't to be instantly dismissed. It did need thought and consideration because if that had been a contributory, con contributing factor, you would want to take steps to re remediate that. So here's, the, this is, sorry, this is BS. This is BS because what she's saying is that we wanted to c consider all factors and, and, and not instantly dismiss them. But then here, here you have two big problems that you dismissed in the end. You dismissed the fact that you had a serious bacterial infection going on in the hospital. You, you considered it, but you dismissed it. And you dismissed it even though the infection was still there. How can you dismiss it if people are still getting infected? It's, it, it can't be dismissed. You have to solve the problem. You didn't solve the problem. It stayed there for over a year. And then the busyness, again, you didn't, you, you didn't deal with that. You didn't deal with that. You waited until after Lucy Letby got removed from the ward before you got the ward downgraded, which made it look like her removal resulted in the reduction in deaths, whereas it was most likely the actual downgrading. So you had less sick babies. So maybe if they got infections, they could fight them. And obviously if you've got less babies and you've got less sick babies, it's just less likely they're gonna die. It's simple. So absolute nonsense. So Dr. Inspected mortality report investigating deaths. Dr. Holt said she had seen a mortality report in April 2016, which investigated deaths at the Countess of Chester. Your first thoughts are always about medical causes because that's my training, she said. They thought about superbugs and common medications and side effects. Dr. Rachel Langdale Casey said, and it's investigated and eliminated them. Dr. Holt said, difficult to eliminate them, but investigated them and then thought about ways and means of modifying the sort of guidance going forward, the treatment plans, etc. So they changed their treatment plans after all these deaths. Also, coincidentally, the deaths kind of, well, reduced, if not stopped. Oh, here's, this is the best one. So at 3.23, she says, Doctor regretted not going to the police after learning of deaths. Dr. Susie Holt told the inquiry she regretted not going to the police in June 2016 after learning of a string of deaths on the unit. Dr. Holt started working as a consultant at the hospital in March 2016 and was unaware there had been several unexplained deaths and collapses. She told the inquiry she had been copied into an email from Dr. Murthy Saladi calling for the police investigation. If I could change one thing in my life, I would have called the police that day she said in a statement to the inquiry. Now, I'm not reading any more of this nonsense. I'll tell you why I'm not reading any more of this nonsense, because that statement there 
to me, is literally the most convenient, like, backfilling statement I've ever seen in my life. Because I'll tell you why this is backfilling. Going back to COVID in, in um, March 2016, just, as, just after we went into lockdown. So can you imagine about two or three days after we went into lockdown, my aunt died of COVID, right? The next week, my uncle died of COVID. And that same week, my other uncle. Now, these are three siblings. They all died in the space of a week. Nobody went to the police, because we knew it was COVID. Or we knew that COVID was going around. There was, I, I don't even think they had a test at the time to, to determine that, I don't know, or maybe they did have a test to determine the cause of death. But, but even before there was, I don't even know if there was an inquest. I don't even know if there was anything. We were told that they were dying of COVID. They died, okay? They were sick. They died. Three relatives in the space of a week, Okay? Nobody went to the police. One of my relatives was in London. Nobody went to the police. You have a bacterial infection going around, people dying of sepsis in the hospital. Why would you go to the police? You'd solve the problem. You fix the problem. It's a problem with hygiene in the hospital. That's why would you backfill it now and say, oh, I wish we'd gone to the police. What would make you want to go to the police at that stage when you know your hospital has got all these problems? You solve the problems. The police cannot solve the problems other than arresting the management for not spending money on staffing and cleaning the hospital. So this is nonsense, absolute nonsense. And this Dr. Holt needs to shut the F up because she's backfilling and making up stuff now Oh, I wish we'd gone to the police then. What would have... You didn't even think the police was necessary at the time because the police were not necessary at the time because you knew what the problem was and the problem was your management and the problem was the NHS's underfunded, which was the government's problem. So this backfilling story is just hurting my head and, and I don't need to read any more of this crap, Okay. So just understand that these people are absolutely backfilling now. They're backfilling and pretending that there was all this... Basically, they're trying to defend the verdict. They're trying to defend, yes, she's definitely a killer. They're not saying, oh, yeah, well, you know, actually, really, we did have all these problems. And this could... Because they, I think they're scared to say it. They're scared to say, or either they're scared to say it, or they're trying to protect themselves. But they, it's quite clear that this hospital had massive problems and they weren't Lucy Letby. The massive problems they had were the, st the understaffing, the busyness, and the cleanliness. And they need to focus on that and stop the backfilling. Talk about what you knew at the time, what you knew at the time, okay? Because you know that she's gone to prison, but you didn't know that at the time. You didn't know she was a killer. And you don't know to this day whether she's a killer. I don't know whether she's a killer. And the reason we don't know whether she's a killer is because the hospital had all these problems. If the hospital was a completely, perfectly well-run hospital without loads of bacteria going around the neonatal ward and without all the um, staffing issues and without inexperienced doctors making botched jobs of um, intubing babies, intubating babies, sorry, then we could say, yeah, okay, it looks like the only possible thing that could have happened here is that somebody was killing these babies. And as this nurse was one of two people, let's be clear, one of two people who was on duty every time one of these babies died, then either this nurse or the other person is the killer. But we don't know this, right? We don't know this. And also, even then, even if this hospital was run perfectly, we would still have one other problem. The problem was that the neonatal unit was not equipped to deal with babies as sick as the babies within the unit. So say this hospital, again, had the right um, experience of staff. Because what what I've heard in, in, in quite a lot of... Um, uh, documentation or read in quite a lot of documentation 
is that these neonatal babies should have been looked at by consultants twice a day. And I know with my daughter, every day, I remember I used to be there when the consultant came around to do the rounds because I wanted to hear the update of, of my daughter's progress. So I was there every single day to listen to the update and I'd get an update in the morning and sometimes, not every day, but some days it would be also later in the day, maybe the afternoon or the evening. But I knew I would ask them what time is the consultant doing the rounds and I'd make sure I was in the hospital at that time. In this hospital, these consultants were seeing these babies once a week. Once a week. Not once a day, once a week. These babies are going to die, mate. These are seriously sick babies and you're seeing them once a week. So if there's any changes in their condition, nothing's been done for days and days until a consultant goes to see them or they crash. And then it's all panic, all, you know, all hands on deck to try and save the baby. That, that, that's chaos. And that's an accident waiting to happen. And that's an accident waiting to happen and waiting for if you've got some sinister staff there waiting for them to rather than put their hands up and say, all right, we screwed up because we didn't do our jobs properly. They're saying, actually, this nurse is a killer because that's a get out for everybody, for the management, for the consultants, for all, all the um, senior medical staff. It's a get out to call, to, to point the finger at the lowest level of um, staff who would have interaction with a baby. And this is what we're seeing here. It's quite clear from reading a lot of this documentation that this, this, she, she's been the scapegoat. They've thrown her under the bus to save themselves. So yeah, that's, that's one thing that's come out of the inquiry. It's quite good that even though the inquiry is staying within its remit, People are, people are, you know, running their mouths and, and saying things. Because I suppose at the end of the day, you can't lie forever, can you? You can't keep lying. So eventually the truth will come out. And it seems like the truth is coming out here. Even if it's coming out in drips and drabs, it's coming out. And I can't see how there won't be a retrial or an appeal Um. And I don't see. I and as they as they say on in on two occasions in this in the inquiry um, yesterday, they said on two occasions that nobody saw Lucy Letby do anything. Nobody saw Lucy Letby do anything, including Doctor JRM with his um virtually saw her do something, but then admits that he didn't actually see anything at all but just imagined it in his stupid brain two years after the event when he had every opportunity to talk about it before. So, yeah, this this sham is coming to an end as far as the doubts about Lucy Letby go. Where that goes from there, whether we act, or she actually gets an appeal is, you know, by the by, I reckon within the next 10 years she might get an appeal. By then, what would she be? <clears throat> She'll be about 45. She'll be about 45, no longer um, able to have children of her own. Probably no man would want to marry her, even though, because they'll be worried, you know, maybe there's a question mark against her. You know, she probably won't be able to get a job. She definitely won't be able to get a job in the medical profession ever again. So, yeah, her life's ruined. Just so that these people could save themselves. You know, that's how the world works, sadly. This happens not just in the medical profession, it happens in so many other professions. It's sad, but the, this is how the people on top, this is how they, they um, survive. They survive by throwing everyone below them under the bus. And that's where we are. So that's the end of this video. Um, I did make a mistake earlier on. When I was listing the um, times, at the beginning of the video, those times were actually timings at the uh, inquiry. I just want to make that clear. But I only realised that when I got to the lower part of the... Because I don't know why it was on the side. It was on the side to the left of the actual article. But yet they had the timings later on. And they explained later on that these were timings at the inquiry rather than on a day in the hospital. But anyway, 
that's that's by the by um yeah as usual please subscribe to my channel um i'm trying to get as n enough subscribers so that i can use the channel to raise enough money to um purchase copies of the transcript so that i can go through it with you or anyone watching i can go through the transcript it will take forever be about seven thousand videos going through the transcripts um and picking out all the clues as to who's been lying, what they're lying about, and what we need to look at to prove what really happened. So that that's really important. And and it may, as I said, going through the transcript, prove that Lucy Letby is a murderer, maybe. Or not prove, it might give us clues to the fact that Lucy Letby is a murderer. I hi think that is highly unlikely highly highly unlikely it will prove that she lied at the, in the court but the things she lied about in court was so innoc you know they were so irrelevant to the actual de whether somebody was a murderer or not it just made her look bad that's all but anyway yeah so please subscribe please share the video please click the like button if you like the video and um feel free to comment as long as you're not abusing uh you know insulting anyone um, personally, you know, we're allowed to disagree on things, but, you know, without them becoming personal insults, please feel free to leave comments. And um, I will speak to you next time. Have a great day.